All right. Um, good late evening slash early morning, depending on where you are. Um, I'm going to be tying a fly tonight. Um, it's going to mimic a tick, like a cow tick. So it's going to be using, I'll turn my camera around here, I'll be using some uh, deer uh, body hair. This is um, the hair that's kind of thick at the base. And then just a dark or black feather in this case. <clears throat> I've got my uni thread dark brown in the ADOT and I've got from the from the Eagle Claw hook uh, variety pack there's the small medium and large and this is the medium size it doesn't have to be that size that's just the size I'm making it based on the size of those cow ticks um, however those cow ticks can be pretty big so you gotta make sure that it's the right size although I guess ticks wouldn't necessarily be ending up in the water very often so who knows if this would be a good but you can always add whatever kind of legs you want to add to this or a tail or ears or eyes however you want to do it um, the main thing I'm showing here is deer um, deer stacking deer hair stacking not stacking deer stacking deer hair so let me turn this down a little bit and get a little glare all right so i've got my hook in my vise there we go now i have pressed down this is a bait holder hook so it has the little barbs on top and a barb on the <clears throat> on the hook itself on the point so i've flattened down that barb and flattened down those barbs this one is so that it doesn't break my thread this one is so that whenever i catch a fish it's easier to take it out of the fish's mouth you know, it's just something that is kind of common with fly tying or fly fishing so i'm going to start with a base layer here some people when they do deer hair stacking on a fly, they don't put a base layer of thread. They just tie it straight to straight to the hook shank. I'm gonna use a base layer. Okay. Stay in focus. Let's see if that helps. Okay. There goes again. Okay. Base layer thread. Um, I think one thing I want to add to this, just for a little bit of a little bit of fluff on the fly. I've got this old fly that I'm, I don't use. I've got some marabou here. I'm just going to rip off a little bit of this marabou and just grab the, the, the tuft of this and pull out some of this junk. Oh, another thing you want to have on this fly is you want to have some kind of basket to catch your hair trimmings whenever you go to trim this fly up. Uh, you'll need something to catch it because the hair is going to go everywhere. This is one that I made out of all, um, out of all duct tape. So I didn't have one, so I made one out of duct tape. And I'm not sure that this is going to catch everything, but we'll see. Anyway, so I have my marabou. A little bit of marabou. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Get these little short ones out. I just want to have a little tuft of a tail sticking out of here, just a little bit, even though ticks don't have a tail. It's just the way I feel like doing it tonight, so here we go. So just a couple of turns here on that. A 
little tough, and you can always cut this off if you decide you don't like it. And I might do that. Who knows? Now, most of the time when you do a fly and you put this kind of material on, you would run it down the hook and you would just wrap it and cover it up. I don't necessarily need the bulk, so I'm going to take this back. Slip it off there. Just one. I'll just cover that little bit up. That's good. All this is going to be covered up, so it shouldn't matter. Now, these things take a little bit of um, a little bit of hair uh, from the deer hair, so hopefully you or someone that you know hunts and has some a deer hide laying around. I was always one to make my deer uh, to get my deer hides tanned and have them, and so. I've got one that I cut from occasionally. So I'm just going to take a clump of deer hair. Like that. And get these loose pieces off. So all I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. And get out. The, there's little under hairs. Little thin hairs. You might see them flying all around now. I'm going to take this. And lay it. On the hook right here. I'm gonna go pinch the string so it doesn't bind down yet. One time, two times, maybe even three times. And I gotta be careful because this is thin thread, but I'm gonna pull down on this. You see it really flare up and it's gonna actually turn around the hook. I'm going to get a couple of turns of thread through the hair to make sure it holds. And then I'm going to pull this back to push it out of the way. And then I'm going to make that come onto the hook again. A couple of turns. I'm going to do the same thing again. And so this is a step that I'm going to keep doing over and over until I cover the hook as much as I need it covered. So I'll take another tuft and clean out the loose hairs in there. I'm going to hold it down. One, two, and make it three. I'll pull down. I just want to be careful not to break that thread because then I'd have a mess. A couple of turns through the hair. Make sure that it's down. Then go over onto the hook again. A couple of turns. Same step again. And grab a clump. Make sure I'm getting a substantial enough clump here. Go from this side. Pull this back. And there it goes. I snapped it. Okay, so if I snap it, I'm going to take that off because I made a couple of extra turns there and I'm going to fix this real quick so I've got my thread I'm going to make a quick half hitch to fix it just something to hold it on to and then I'm just going to come back I'm going to re-thread my bobbin holder. I'll snip that because it's frayed on the end. I 
ideally you want to use a thicker thread as I said before so this is a 8 aught you want to use probably a 6 aught pretty tough stuff and a good thing if you're learning how to tie for the first time is get your thread and wrap it around the hook and pull down on it and practice making things tight to see how much your thread can take and how much how much strength you can put into pulling that string okay get my so I've got that fixed now cut off another clump I like showing things like the string breaking because I saw that on a video where a guy did it on purpose to show how you fix it and it happens to me whenever I'm tying and I think it's important to know how to fix it if it happens I didn't get that clump very good but that's okay turn and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna come in and tie this off. And then I'm going to trim the hair, and then I'm going to come in and add a feather in. So I'm actually going to tie this in twice. So when I tie this off, I go under. So I went over my finger, under the hook, over my finger again. I reach through the loop to grab the second string. Pull it through, and I put it back where it was. Ooh, I dropped it. I should call my channel the Imperfect Flies of Jason. Because they are definitely imperfect. And that's okay. I have caught many fish on my flies. Alright, so now I have this crazy fluff of uh, deer hair on my hook. It's nuts. A little brush. Not necessary, but I've got this mustache brush. Let's run through and get any loose things out. And I think I got it pretty good in the first place. So nothing to worry about there. Now, let me get this out of the screen so it's not in the way. So you can see what's going on. All right, now. This is where you get to be a barber. This is where my mother being a barber has trained me. Not really. I'm just going to shape it. But my mother was a barber. Or a beautician. Whatever. So I'm just going to take this. So I've got curved scissors. And I'm just going to make snips that make this hair curved. And you can even you know, fluff it straight up. So it makes it more fluffy. I'm just going to make... Little snips and I've got my vice loose here so that I can turn it as I go you see the hair going everywhere as I trim it now this the thing about doing this with deer hair is you can make things like frogs and mice. Maybe I'll make a mouse later. 
um, on a flight, on a video. But you can make things like baby ducks and mice and little other birds and frogs and things that that swim and make the water turn up and you can do this on big hooks that attract bass and that catch bass and you can shape this stuff into a lot of different things and some people instead of using scissors in this case they will use a razor blade which makes it very smooth They'll use one of the old school razor blades that goes, uh, one that's got the blade on both sides. And they're really flimsy or floppy or flexible. And you can, um, as you're cutting, you can curve them to the shape you need to cut. So you can, you can curve it and come in curved and just slide it over and it'll shape that hair for you. So where I said before that I had, um, I put in a tail and I could come in and cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and round the back of this fly off a little more. And make that tail go away because I don't think that it's necessary on this fly. here and seeing that I have some hairs that are longer than others so I'm just looking for just like the barber does when they cut your hair you gotta go both ways and see where it's not matching side to side where it's not um, where it's not the right length So this deer hair is, you know, from more when it's colder outside, and the deer grow hair that's kind of hollow, and it makes them protected from the cold weather. And so because it's hollow, it has a tendency to float, and that's why it's good for this kind of thing. Also, when you, because it's hollow, when you tighten it down, it lets it crimp and bend, and that's what makes it flare out like it does. I'm assuming that's what makes it flare out because the same thing happens like if you crease a straw it'll bend on you okay so I'm gonna get this just a little bit away from the hook I'm leaving a little bit of a gap there but this is coming along pretty good this is where a razor would be nice because I could make some good straight much straighter cuts under this utility knife which doesn't really bend like I want it to but I might be able to shave no it's not sharp enough okay and that's where trial and error comes in not really necessary okay so um there's basic the basic body kind of a size of about a kidney bean or so um, and the thing with uh, with these ticks is they have a black head 
black or brown and they have some legs here and here and then by their head and somehow they manage to move around being as fat as they are I think if my legs are as short as as theirs are compared to my body I wouldn't be able to move All right, so there, that's about as much as I'm going to do there. Now I'm going to get back to my thread again. Oh, and as you can see in the background here, there's hair everywhere. Uh, like I said, that stuff really gets everywhere, so. Okay, my bobbin came unthreaded again. In case you didn't see me threading the bobbin earlier, you just take the end of the string the thread and it goes into the end of the tube sometimes more easily than other times like that. you can just either keep feeding it through or you can just put it in your mouth suck on it like a straw and then it comes through and there it's out okay so I'm just gonna restart my thread here at the head let me tighten this down it doesn't dance all around so remember before I finished before I trimmed the hair I ended the fly and tied it off but now I'm putting the string back on the thread back on so that I can build a head a little bit and that just entails um, going back and forth here and covering it with more thread making it look kind of like it's a head of a bug and I'm also going to come back a little bit see I came back to let's see if I can get a better angle for you So I, um, I came back with the thread and gave it some space right here. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take this feather and rip off the barbs until it's in the thinner section here. We're going to go and take them off of one side even further. This just keeps it from getting too bulky and having it stick everywhere. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to trim this off like that. Jumped it. Lay it next to the hook. Let me back this out a little bit. Like that. Put it right in there where the thread is. And bind it down. two or three turns. I'm going to snip off this excess feather business here. Okay, and then I'm going to just take this feather and just make a couple of wraps. just use up these barbs of this feather just wrap it till there's not any barbs anymore and I'm going to tie off the quill again Pull 
these barbs back a little bit come back in I'm getting a good shaped head here it's very much of a cone shape work its way down there and I'm going to do again my half hitch which is around the finger make an X on top of the hook and I'm just going to knock that off my finger let it fall below tighten it down I'll do that one more time and go over my finger under my finger between my finger and the hook lay that thread on top of the hook just knock it off my finger so that it comes down and into place and then I'm going to finish it off with my finishing knot which is over the finger one time under the hook and give it some more space over the finger again behind the other loop off I take my finger go through the first loop I grab the second part pull it through lay it back where it was I hold it with my middle finger of this this hand so I can go again through the loop grab the second string pull it through again then what I do is I either pinch it here to keep this loop from opening up and grabbing my feathers or I can take a sharp pointed object it can be anything it doesn't have to be that pointed it can be something even dull like this I can put this in and I can take this down and all I'm doing is controlling that loop to make sure it goes where I want it to go because if that had fallen just then, if it had fallen back over this, it would have taken these feathers and pulled them forward and they would have been sticking out the front. I don't want that. Okay, so that's my finished tie off. I'm actually going to use this little, this is a sewing tool for, for breaking threads. And I'm just going to take that. Ooh, that is dull. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not going to do that. It's dull when you touch that with a thread and it doesn't cut it. All right, and then I'm going to take my clear nail polish. I'm going to finish the fly by putting a little bit of that on these threads to keep them from coming loose. Uh, some people say you can use a whip finisher. And if you use a whip finisher correctly, you don't need the... Uh, you don't need the lacquer or nail polish or whatever to keep it that a good that a good um, whip finish will stop it from coming untied indefinitely um, this is a whip finisher and it's a tool you can use to tie it off I'll do another video with that so anyway this back drop off a little bit so you can see the fly so there is my cow tick or you could put you know, little legs hanging off the back of this or tie them around the head or whatever and make it a some kind of a water bug this but this fly will float though and it'll float in the fish like to have that big fluffy body so there we go there's a cow tick um, these feathers simulate the legs on the front you could trim off the top and bottom and just have them be on the side um, uh, but the head is black just like a tick's head and you could even make that head a little smaller more like a tick again it's not perfection and my motto or my saying for fly tying sometimes you tie a fly and it's the most amazing fly you've ever seen and sometimes you end up with a bunch of crap tied to a hook so hopefully this um, is can would be considered a kind of a halfway amazing fly not really amazing but pretty cool it'll work oh here's one more thing you might want to make more of a gap here make this more flat on the bottom ticks are pretty flat bodied even when they're full 
and that would also clear up your hook point uh, to make sure that it gets a better bite on the fish when the fish bites back. So, hope you, oh, that's close. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed that fly. Um, it's a tick without being gross like a tick, and it should catch some flies, some fish. Wow, it's late. I need to go to bed. So, anyway, have a good night. Don't be afraid to try fly tying. Um, it's fun. It's enjoyable if you like being artistic and being creative. So give it a whirl and, um, and then try fly fishing because it's fun too. But anyway, have a good night. Thanks for watching.